Hello, my name is Adam Cruces. I'm originally from Houston, Texas, and I received my Bachelor's of Fine Arts from the Kansas City Art Institute in 2008. And June of this year, I received my Master's of Fine Arts at the Zurich University of the Arts. The first project I'd like to talk about is called Vertigo, which was made in 2008. This particular project sort of marks the beginning of my relationship with the internet. It's my first internet-oriented piece. The video was sourced from the internet. The web also became the place to show the work. All my work previously was self-shot. I felt very precious about generating the content myself, and this marks the beginning of me breaking away from that mentality. In the next video, Shane after Jack Goldstein, which was made in 2009, there's a very similar situation going on, again using existing content and making simple manipulations to transform the experience of the original source, and then uploading that remixed version back online. At this point, I became very intrigued by the digital realm, not only as a space for production, but a space for presentation as well. The first project I was a facilitator rather than creator was called State, which I started in 2010. Each week, a different artist would take over the website to present a brand new project accompanied by a statement. Projects could take any form that the artist chose, pictures, videos, sounds, uh, text, it didn't matter. In this example, John Raffman created a domain with a video he made using Google Earth and Google Street Views. Katya Novitskova made a performative installation which was updated throughout a week. Here you can see how it evolved through that time period. Tabor Robak created a sculpture in a video game format for visitors to download and explore the space he created. For me, State was important because it got me interacting with peers, doing very exciting digital projects. State then led me to the next project, which is called Desktop Views. After interacting with so many new artists I had never met in person, I was curious about their studio setup. Since people share a lot about their personal spaces and surroundings via Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr, I was wanting to see their digital space, even if only on the surface. So I asked 51 artists to send me screen captures of their desktops, which serve as a very abbreviated studio visit. And I always felt that just looking at someone's desktop is quite revealing to how a person works. Some are minimal and tidy, messy and cluttered. And out of the whole project, I believe there's only three PC users. It's always interesting to see which programs and images or files somebody might have been collecting on their desktop. Even the arrangement, as you can see here, the programs on the left side are color coordinated. Another interesting aspect is to see how it compares or contrasts with the artist's work. Before I get to my personal work, I'd like to talk about the most recent project I facilitated, which was called Headquarters. It was a project space that I ran out of my studio in Zurich from February 2012 to February 2013. For Headquarters, I invited artists to engage a local and global audience with new projects that extend from physical to the virtual. The artists would create experiences that complement one another while being site-specific to the audience through material and digital modes of presentation being site-specific in both cases to the space physically in Zurich, as well as headquarters space online. In both situations, the artists had the freedom to choose how they dealt with the respective spaces. Here you see a collaboration between Parker Ito and Body by Body. This is the physical presentation. And 
For the online presentation, they chose to do a documentation timeline. Here's another one by Martin Kohout. The offline presentation and the online presentation. The one that had probably the most seamless experience between online and offline was Kareem Lotfi's presentation, which you see here. Headquarters was a very important experience because it pushed me in the direction of trying to find a better balance between digital and physical. Both become rather interchangeable ways of creating an experience, producing and presenting, and I enjoy seeing these lines blurred. Now I'm going to talk about a personal project called Unfinished. This series of images is based on paintings that were left unfinished by artists throughout history. In this case, the paintings have been finished by Adobe Photoshop CS5's content-aware fill feature. Each image is then printed on canvas at the same size as the original painting. Here you can see an example of how the content-aware tool functions. It's meant to remove unwanted areas or objects within an image. So in this case, you see the sign being selected by the user, and then you click a button and it will remove that area. With these two pictures, you can see that for my project, I selected the white canvas and then that's what was removed by the program. Depending on your perspective, you can see this as a misuse or repurposing of the tool. Either way, I found the results fascinating. These days, the internet and technology are more a source of inspiration and dissemination. The digital aspect of my practice is much less of a focal point in my current projects. Although it's not the subject matter, it is a tool for generating and communicating. A realm to influence and be influenced in and by. Thank you.